everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here. In this tutorial, we're going to take a psychedelic voyage along with what has been called the secret effect in After Effects, CC Time Blend Effects. It's not in your effects menu, but get this, it's on your computer right now. They just didn't think you could handle it. I disagree, so we're going to run through how to activate this effect. I'm going to do my best to explain how it works. It's a deceptively simple premise that very quickly starts to bend the capacities of one's mind, but we're just going to jump all the way into the deep end and build out this crazy purple haze smoke transition. Probably not a great tutorial if you're just getting started with After Effects. It's not all that complicated, but it is kind of like turning the effects in After Effects up to 11. So continue the video at your own peril. Let's get into After Effects and check it out. All right, we're here in After Effects and I'm gonna get this effect up and running over a piece of text, but I'll include a couple tips about how to apply it to footage or an image. Like I mentioned in the intro, the effect we're really gonna lean on here is CC Time Blend Effects. Now, it's an effect that used to be in your time effects. Long story short, it didn't work with multi-core processing, so it got cut from the program. Then After Effects stopped using multi-core processing, but Time Blend Effects didn't make its way back into the menu. However, the plugin is still, at least for now, just hanging out in your plugins folder, wondering why nobody's asking it to dance. It just doesn't show up in the effects menu. But here's the workaround. What you can do is go to the Psycore Effects website. They're the ones who created the effect. I'll put a link below and on their website, you can download an animation preset. You download it, it's an FFX file that gets dropped in your presets folder. There's a little PDF that shows you how to do that. And then in After Effects, in your animation presets, you'll be able to find these two effects, CC Time Blend and CC Time Blend Effects. So CC Time Blend is more or less the same as the Echo Effect, but you can try that one out. For now, we're gonna focus on CC Time Blend Effects. And this can be applied directly to a regular layer, but I think the logic of it is a little clearer if we use adjustment layers. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer and drag this animation preset onto it. Now, technically it's an animation preset, but the only thing it does is just give you an instance of this effect. Maybe Adobe will see people are interested in the effect and just put it back in the menu, right? One can only hope. All right, first of all, let me just see if I can diagram out the logic of this effect. Time blend effects is basically an echo effect. So if I take this animation of a ball bouncing back and forth and I use a regular echo effect, I can get it to look like this, right? Now with time blend effects, it's like an echo, but you always use two copies of it. The one that gets applied first is set to paste and the one that gets applied last is set to copy. Then in between those time blend effects, you can put any other effects. So for example, the turbulent displace effect. And now when it echoes, with each echo, you get more and more turbulent displace applied. And you can use it in combination with more than one effect. So here's time blend effects with turbulent displace and an offset that pushes each echo up. Here it is with turbulent displace, offset, and a tint to give each echo a little bit more red color. And now that the echo is moving and kind of animated, we can completely lose the animation on the ball itself, and the time blend effects echoes are gonna give it this swirling echo effect that just keeps going. Okay, hopefully the basic principle comes across there because it is a little unusual how you set it up. So it kind of helps to know what we're aiming for here. Let's check out how this works in practice. So I've got this piece of type and the adjustment layer that I've dragged time blend effects onto. Now, the first thing I wanna point out is that I'm working here at 48 frames per second, basically double the standard 24 frames per second. To understand why, let's quickly look at the bouncing ball example again. So I created this graphic at six frames per second, so these echoes would be really distinct from each other. You get these big jumps from one frame to the next. But generally, I don't wanna see these big leaps from one frame to the next. So here's the same animation set to 12 frames per second. The little marks between the frames are a little closer together. Here's the same thing at 24 frames per second, looking smooth and for the effect I want to build in this tutorial, I want this super smooth 48 frames per second. Once I've rendered it, I can always import that render and drop it into a 24 frames per second comp. The gray background here is just the preview background color. It's really just transparent behind this text. Okay, so first of all, we always need two copies of this effect, and they can both be on the same layer. I could duplicate the effect here, but I think it's easier to keep track of when it's on two separate adjustment layers. So I'm gonna duplicate the adjustment layer, and I'm gonna name the top one copy. I'll even put a little arrow in here that'll give us some reference, and that'll make more sense in a minute. Then on the bottom one, I'm going to rename the layer paste, and I will set the effect to paste. 
And for now, I'm gonna turn the accumulation up to 90%. That's just gonna make the effect a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna change the clear setting to current frame. That basically says before the effect has time to build up an echo, do you wanna start on a transparent frame or on the current frame? I basically always have this set to current frame. Then let's introduce some effects between these two adjustment layers. I'm gonna put one more adjustment layer in here, right in between the copy and paste layers, and I'll call this one effects. Then let's apply the Turbulent Displace effect, and we'll give the Turbulent Displace a little bit of animation on the evolution. So I could use keyframes here, but for something really linear and continuous like this, it's a great spot to use an expression. I'm gonna Alt or Option click on the little stopwatch and use the expression time times 100, and that'll just drive the evolution based on the timeline. Okay, let's see how that is looking. So time blend effects is creating this echo effect and each echo is getting more and more turbulently displaced. I do wanna be a little more concrete about how the effect works and that's why I've put these little arrows in here. So what's happening is that we've got this text, it gets turbulent displace applied to it, then this time blend effects makes a copy of it and the next frame you hit, just stepping forward one frame, that copy gets pasted into the time blend down here and gets turbulent displaced again. It gets copied, next frame gets pasted to get displaced again. So there's this little loop that's happening between these two time blend effects. If that seems a little abstract, that's totally fine. But either way, since every echo gets turbulent displace applied again, these echoes get really weird really fast. Maybe I wanna take turbulent displace down from 50 to just 10. All right, now that's gonna highlight a very important thing to know about this effect. Now, I believe the way that it works is that it uses your disk cache for this copy paste function. Now, it has to do that, otherwise just this one frame would require processing every turbulent displace for every single one of those echoes. But the fact that it's using the cache does create this nuisance because what's happened is that we've accidentally grabbed a frame out here as the copy and then pasted it in here at the beginning of the timeline and things are just getting all out of order. Now, when the effect was really native to After Effects, it had a button right here that said clear and that just made it nice and simple to reset the effect. Without that button, the catch-all solution is to use purge all memory and disk cache. Unfortunately, just image cache won't do it. I might be wrong, but I don't think it's using your image cache. I think it's using the disk cache. Either way, my advice if you're gonna experiment with this effect is just to set up a keyboard shortcut for purge all memory and disk cache. I've got mine set to shift X, and you just kind of get used to clearing things out as you make changes to the effect. Then for the effect to do its thing properly, you have to just let it play from the beginning of the timeline. All right, let's start to dial things in to really create this effect. So I do wanna use the turbulent displace, but I'm gonna change a few values here. I'm gonna change the displacement to twist and bring the amount down to just three and also bring the complexity up to 10. So we've got these swirling echoes and I also want the echoes to kind of push outwards. You'll see what I mean. On this same adjustment layer, I'm gonna apply the mini max effect. And if I set this to just two and switch the channel to affect both the alpha and the color channels, Let's see that with no turbulent displace. So for each frame, it's kind of expanding the brightest values and the most opaque pixels. Then we can combine that with the turbulent displace and it looks like this. All right, I also want these swirly echoes to kind of push off sideways, just like in the bouncing ball example where I was using offset. The problem with offset though, is that when it leaves the frame, it wraps back around to the other side. So instead I'm gonna use the transform effect and just move the position over a few pixels. I'm gonna change that first position value from 960 to 963, and that just pushes each echo three pixels to the right. All right, and these echoes are pretty dense right now, mostly because the Minimax is giving us more and more light values and more opaque pixels out here. Let's introduce another effect that kind of eats away at the echoes. And the plan here is to create a fractal noise and then basically use it as a mask. But the way I'm gonna do this is to create some fractal noise on a new layer. So I'll create a new solid and call it fractal and give this the fractal noise effect. And I'm just gonna bring the scale down a little bit and the transform section will go down to 50% scale. And let's also give this thing a little bit of animation. Same as the turbulent displace, I'm gonna alt or option click to create an expression on the evolution. And here we'll go with time times 500. So that's gonna give us something like that. But what I'm gonna do here is turn this layer's visibility off. 
And back on the effects layer, apply the calculations effect. And this allows us to combine channels from two different layers. I'll leave the input as is, then for the second layer, I'm gonna point it to the fractal layer, switch it over to effects and masks, and take the second layer opacity up to about 20%, change the blending mode to silhouette luma, and turn off the preserve transparency checkbox. All right, so what that's doing now is for each echo, it's using this fractal as a very subtle luma mask, just masking it out 20% at a time. And that's helping to give us a little bit more noise and cloudiness to these echoes. And that's actually all the effects we need on the effects layer. But let's go back to the time blend effects paste layer down here. So the accumulation is set to 90% right now. The effect always fades out and we get the original layer kind of feeding into the echoes. But what do you think will happen if we turn the accumulation all the way up to 100%? It's gonna take the first frame and go into this feedback loop where it pastes in each frame at 100% opacity and then applies the effects over and over and over again and basically takes the effects to their logical conclusion. And if we look at each of the effects by themselves, it's kind of interesting to see where you end up if you just loop them over and over and over again. Turbulent Displace will just keep swirling things more and more. The Minimax effect will grow until the brightest pixel takes over everything. Transform will just push things over and right out of the frame. And the Calculations effect with that fractal noise will just mask things out to nothing. At least it should be masking things out to nothing, but as you can see, it's getting really faint and then just kind of hovering there. And that is because I forgot to set the project to 16 bit when I started. When we get these really faint values from one frame to the next, we might be going from 2% opacity to 1.9% opacity. And at 8 bit, After Effects just keeps rounding it up to two and we kind of get stuck in a different sort of a loop here. So in the project settings, with a simple Alt or Option click, I'm gonna switch over to 16-bit, and now we should be able to get things to completely fade out. So we've got all four of these effects. Each of them play out in kind of a different way when they're being looped, but when you put them all together, we get this poof into a single cloud of smoke. All right, now this is where I think things start to get really cool. So let's try putting a mask on this paste layer. I'm just gonna mask out half of it. Now the time blend effect is only gonna loop in this half of the frame, right? But check out what happens if I animate this mask. So I'll start with a completely off the frame and set a key here. And then over the course of about three seconds, we will reveal this entire adjustment layer. Now time blend effects is gonna slowly overtake the image. It's like we're hitting it with radiation where the longer something is under it, the more distorted it gets because it's had more time to loop. So let's refine this mask a little bit. I'm gonna make it reveal at kind of an angle. So we'll start it over here and then end up something like that. And I'm also gonna feather out the X axis on the mask to 200 pixels. And that's gonna give us a little bit of a smoother transition. Okay, then a couple more details that I think are worth including. One, I'm gonna go all the way back to this turbulent displace effect. And what I want is for the overall turbulence pattern to kind of drift over to the right. So on the offset turbulence setting, I'm also gonna create an expression. Since this has two values, an X and a Y, the expression's a little more detailed. I'm gonna use open bracket, time times 200, comma, 540, close bracket. And that's gonna animate the offset just on the X axis. So you can see that location point kind of drifting over as we go. Okay, then finally, the effects on this layer, they are distorting the image a little bit right from the start before the time blend effects gets revealed and starts looping them. What I'm gonna do is create a mask on this effects layer. It could be whatever, just a little square, because I'm gonna get the shape of the mask from the mask down here on the paste time blend effects layer. And I'll do that using the pick whip. So I do need to right click here in my timeline and make sure the parent and link column is visible. Then for the mask shape or the mask path that is, all I have to do is drag the pick whip from the mask path on this layer to the mask path down here. And I'll also drag the mask feather to the feather down here. And that's gonna make this mask copy whatever this mask does. Meaning we're basically hiding any of these effects from hitting the image until the time blend effects is also being applied. And that kind of covers the structure of how this effect is put together. But I do wanna show you how I like using this setup to build a more dimensional and finished look. What I like to do is create three slightly different versions of the same effect. So I'll take this comp and duplicate it twice. I'm gonna call one of them large haze, one of them medium haze, and one small haze. So large haze is the one we just built. 
For medium haze, I'm just gonna make a few tweaks to some of these settings. So first of all, in turbulent displace, we wanna change the random seed for a different swirly pattern. And I'm also gonna bring the size down to 50, so smaller turbulent swirls. Then on the minimax effect, I'm gonna bring the radius down to one so it doesn't expand things out quite as far. The effect will stay a little bit more condensed. And on the transform effect, I'm gonna make these X values only push it two pixels to the right instead of three. So instead of 963, this will be 962. And finally, I also wanna change the random seed on the fractal noise. All right, so this medium haze now just has a slightly different look to it. All right, then on the small haze, we'll make this one quite a bit less cloudy. So first of all, I'm gonna turn down the complexity on the turbulent displace to five. I'll also change the random seed on this turbulent displace. And on this one, I'm actually gonna completely eliminate this minimax effect. I'm just gonna turn this effect off. And you can see that makes it less puffy clouds and just more of that turbulent displace swirling. Then let's take the transform setting here down to just 961. So it'll just push things very slowly to the right. And without the minimax effect to expand things outward, everything is also fading out much faster. So in the calculations effect, let's take the second layer opacity down to 14, and that'll make things fade out just a little bit more slowly. Then let's give this version one more effect, just a tiny bit of blur on each echo. I'm gonna add in a fast box blur and just set the radius to 0.25. It'll just blur things a tiny amount each time, but it's enough to soften it out a little bit. And finally, I wanna make sure to change the random seed on the fractal noise here. And that is gonna be the small haze look, more of a wispy smoke. So now I've got three variations of this effect. Now the safe option here is just to render out all three of these separately before blending them together in one comp. But if you have enough RAM and you can carefully go into each one of these comps and get a preview rammed up from start to finish without getting one of those weird ghost echoes in the wrong place, you can actually drop all three of these into a single comp. And with them all stacked up, we're starting to get a really nice sense of depth happening. Again, it would probably make more sense to render these out first, but if you're still kind of dialing things in, it's at least worth a shot to try to get everything into a single comp like this. But here, maybe I can add a little bit of overall treatment. So I'll put a black solid in the background. Then let's add an adjustment layer on top and give it a little bit of color with a tritone effect. And I'll set the midtones to something really nice and saturated. Then I'll give this even a little bit more color by generating a four color gradient. And I'll set this to overlay blending mode with the opacity down at 50%. All right, well, there we have it. Definitely some strange concepts at work with time blend effects, but I really like how this effect turns out. And if you wanted to apply this to footage or an image rather than typography, the process is basically the same, but instead of text down here, you can put footage or a photograph. However, with something like this piece of footage, I might want the image to transition to black rather than transparent. And in that case, there are a few things you can include to kind of change up the effect a little bit. So on the effects layer, I'm gonna include a solid composite effect and that'll be set to black. And I actually need two instances of solid composite, one as the first effect here and one as the last. And that'll basically switch it over to an effect that turns everything black instead of transparent. I'm also going to include a hue saturation adjustment with the saturation down just at about negative 5%. So the smoke gets desaturated and it all kind of turns gray. It also gets darker much faster. So you can dial down the calculations effect from 20% to about 15% and we end up with something like that. So create a couple variations on this and then blend them all together in a single comp with maybe varying opacities on the different versions. And you can get some very cool effects like this as well. So these really are just a few possibilities of the many, many things you can do with time blend effects. I hope you guys enjoy experimenting with it. I will post to this After Effects project file for Texture Labs Patreon supporters. I believe if you open a file that has time blend effects used in it, you don't even need to download that preset from Psycore Effects. The effects should just show up when you open the file. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.